Iris, beautiful mother. So Matthew went to special school in, in Castle Bar and when he finished that they, um, the next opportunity was to go to the National Learning Network which again was a small supportive situation and very positive. However, in the meantime, Clan Bio had been organised as a support to help people to live good contributing lives in their own communities. And I think Matthew liked Castle Bar, but he really missed the local connections. And he came along to some of the meetings where he heard for the first time of a pilot scheme in which people with Down syndrome and a whole variety of other intellectual disabilities were going to college. Immediately he started searching the internet and harassing his parents. <laughs> <laughs> night, noon and morning because he just wanted to go to college. I kind of, I think independently he came across Blue Teapot and Willie, who's the mainstay of Clan Bio, saw an ad for Blue Teapot who were starting a school of performing arts and we had already figured out what Matthew's great strengths were, which was things like play acting <laughs> and a love for music and putting them all together that seemed like an ideal sort of a place a performing arts school so between the two of us we sat down and he told me what to put in a letter to them why he was interested and why they should take him and we sent off the letter he had an interview and he got to he was offered a place all of those steps were very challenging for him. He was terrified at every turn of the corner, but he was like a dog with a bit between his teeth and he wasn't giving up. The only problem about Blue Teapot is we live outside Westport and Blue Teapot is based in Galway. So we just said, all right, Matthew has to go to live in Galway. And luckily enough, his father was his chief carer and I had just taken early retirement so we decided that we could, on a week by week, on an alternative week basis, share an apartment with Matthew. We discovered that um, he was entitled to a rent supplement. We had to go to our local um, county council office and be put on the housing list and then they wrote, uh, we had to go to the doctor who certified that Matthew could not live alone. And we then brought these, all of this documentation to Galway. There was a fairly lengthy process of going from one office to the other. And at the time, finding out what office to go to. But I have to say that people were supportive and we were eventually, um, he was given the rent allowance. For this flat we did get the rent support uh, and Matthew pays the other part of it and we contribute as much as we can also. Everything was above board and accepted by the landlord and you know he's quite happy to accept it. The next bit was asking Matthew what kind of place he wanted to live in and he had very definite ideas. I want a place that was very, very close to Blue Teapot and I can have someone and that's my dad just to stay here with me. He did not want to live in a house, he wanted to live in an apartment, he wanted it to be small enough that he could manage not too much housework and he wanted to be able to walk to Blue Teapot. Yeah, we went to the estate agents and uh there were a lot of stuff, there were a lot of places we could go and see, but um, uh, we had a budget and we eventually narrowed it down to about three places. <laughs> well, from those three places, we came down to Whitstrand Avenue, which, we, which was um, close enough to town. And we met the landlord and uh, he offered us the place. Hi, my name is Tim Brennan, I'm the landlord here where 
Matthew and Mike stay. I have no great advice to give a penny landlord, except that people with the intellectual uh, disabilities are absolutely beautiful people to deal with and you never have a problem with them and um, always worth giving people a chance and you will find the rewards are great. I would say my abiding memory is initially when Matthew was in the apartment in Galway that Matthew Quinn woke up every morning and came in and he said I have my own apartment <laughs> I can't believe I have my own apartment and he was so excited about it and it was so wonderful and amazing to him that probably lasted for most of the first year the whole thing was to let Matthew feel that it was his flat alone for his independent living and as a, as a kind of um, an introduction to uh, inter independent living uh, that the whole process was geared towards him, for him, and actually it was he who signed the contract, along with me and his mum. So in the, in, the, in the wider picture, you know, living in a city has all the pitfalls of living for, for Matthew as would have for anybody. He really had to get his act together to be responsible for the place. And that's the most remarkable thing to me, is the way in which he has learned to look after the place, that he has learned to cook, you know, full meals, um, that he has learned to wash up after himself, even though he didn't always feel like it. Um, and the real guiding force there has been that he wants to take responsibility for his life. Being an adult, here it is a, a great thing to do because then I can I can learn how how to cook properly. I can know I could know how to to wash my own dishes, my own bed, and I can do my my laundry. Yeah, I can do more more stuff. I just think it's better if I if I do a few things that that I need to do for myself. I mean, where Matthew has come from in those three years is completely transformative. Completely transformative. For the person who was so shy, I mean, between going to Blue Teapot and having his own place, um, he is a completely different person. It's leading me in the direction of him being, you know, living life to the full. I don't know what he will want. You know, those things are true for everybody. Do you want to live away from home? Can you find somebody that you'd like to, to share your place with? How long can you stick them for? <laughs> um, yeah, they're all open questions, but they're, at least they're open for Matthew now in the same way that they are open for other people.